Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net, and in this video we're going to show you how to install the exhaust repair kit on our 2004 Yamaha F225. Now if you've been keeping up, we actually have rebuilt the engine and the lower unit completely. And the only thing standing in our way now is this midsection. Now, it looks like somebody has gone in and installed a kit on this particular engine, but I can't trust that. So let's step over to the table, take a look at that one part number that has 22 different parts inside of one big box that addresses the corrosion issue for this particular make and model. Let's go. So here it is, the one part number from Yamaha that addresses the corrosion issue on our particular outboard. I believe it's 22 individual parts that comprise this kit that address all the different areas that can be affected by corrosion. Now, as far as any special tools, I will call those out as we go along, but chances are the only one that we're gonna need is just an accurate torque wrench. Everything's laid out, let's head over and start getting this installed. As you can see, we've already removed the lower unit and the power head, and if you need instructions on how to do that, why don't you check our playlist and we can walk you through that process. Now, with those two pieces removed, we can actually start addressing the exhaust kit. As you're going through this or any other project, do yourself a favor. Keep a supply of Ziploc bags with a Sharpie so you can keep up with what parts went to which section because I guarantee you, if you put this in one big pile, it's gonna be much more difficult to get it back together because if you're like me, I can't remember things more than three days. It just doesn't happen. Well, let's start with the linkage. Thought that was going to bind up on me for a minute. Go ahead and get her lifted off. Well, someone has definitely done the corrosion kit on this particular midsection. But like I said in the opening, I'm not going to trust that. We're going to go through and replace it. Now if you want to see just how bad the corrosion was on this one, look at the bottom end tear down. It actually ate all the way through the crankcase itself, going from the water jacket straight into where one of the old passageways was. And when you filled it up with oil, oil ran out through the exhaust. It was bad, <laughs> real bad. I'm fairly certain that we drained the oil before we started this process, but we'll go ahead and make sure then we're going to go ahead and remove this outer cover and then that inner damper. What you're seeing there shouldn't happen as predicted. Whoever did this, they still made a few mistakes. There's supposed to be a damper in between the outer part of the oil tank and the inner. And it's not there. And so that's what allowed the oil just to drain straight through the exhaust and that's not what we want to happen. So I'll add that to my parts list and get it ordered as well. We could have done this earlier, but let's get the shift shaft removed and out of the way. All right for the shift shaft, you just need to carefully pull it straight up and it'll come through that grommet. There we go. All right. Yeah, both the top and the bottom, what you're working with are 219s. Work them all the way out till the uh, nylon lock nut is almost off and then you can just take it off by hand. It does have a fair amount of weight to it, so be ready when you do it and have a place to go. 
be careful of these edges. They are sharp. And they will open you up. Yeah, be careful. There's a nylon tube here on the bottom that we don't need to damage. Looks like this wire is actually part of the ground strap system. Obviously, it's broken, so we're going to need to replace that as well. Otherwise, this is going to corrode as soon as we put it back in the water. And after all this work, I'm not going to let that happen. All right. Now. All right, I've just set her up straight. You may want to work with it on its side. I'm going to leave it upright so you can watch me get it broken down the rest of the way. Let's get this thing broken down. Now, if you're doing it like I am, be a little careful. It's a bit top heavy. This is just a retaining bracket for this little piece right there. more up front. There we go. Fun, fun, fun. For the most part, all we're going to need from here on out it's going to be the bolts, but we'll go ahead and break it down. This pickup tube isn't looking too good, but we'll go ahead and pull it down. It looks like they've done it correctly so far, but I don't like the fact that they reinstalled a corroded pickup tube. We are going to go ahead and replace it. A few more bolts to get out and then uh, it'll officially be broken all the way down. And when you get it to this point, there's going to be four bolts with this internal section that you need to get. And then there's two more right over here. And at that point, she should lift up. Chances are the customer that owned this says it's got that corrosion issue. We'll go ahead and put the corrosion kit on it and that should fix the problem. No, <laughs> she was way, way too far gone for all of that. There we go. Well, there it is. It's broken all the way down. The only thing I have to do now is transfer over the dowel pins and gather up all those bolts. That way we can start putting together everything that was on that table that I showed you in the beginning of the video. So let's get to it. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of grease inside of that seal. So when the time comes to get the shift shaft through there, it'll go through a little bit easier. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this O-ring. So it seats up against the surface without tearing. And they call this a seal, but what is sealing? I'm not exactly sure, but this is where it goes. Let's go ahead and get our oil pickup, make sure that it has its O-ring down in the bottom. And 
once again, you're just using or reusing the old bolts. Yep. Make sure we got our dowels in place. All right, guys, just want to pause for just a moment and show you that with the 04 and newer kit, they actually send out two gaskets now. They look really, really similar. You'll notice on this end, there are several more holes drilled compared to this one. Now, they didn't do this by accident. That's because mid-year, they actually made a change in the upper casing. And what you want to look for is to see if there is a six millimeter hole drilled about right here. Now mine does not have that hole, so which gasket do I use? Well, it's pretty easy. If yours has that hole, you use the one with the extra holes drilled in the gasket. If it does not, like mine, then you want to use this one. So that's the one we're going to get installed. Just make sure you put it in the right one, because it would be a huge pain in the tail to go back and then discover you're wrong and have to pull it all back apart. So with that being known, let's continue. Those two dowels in. Got that in correctly. Now, remember these aren't bolted together, so you need to hold it from the that bottom plate. So we've got our bolts cleaned up and we're going to put a little bit of Loctite down on the threads and then we're going to torque them to 14 foot-pounds. You don't have to get super carried away with the amount that you put on the threads. As they, they do want you to put on red, but there may come a time where you may, you may want to take this back apart. And if you put too much, it's going to be real tough to get them back out. No, I'm not going to torque it with this. This is just to get them to seat. 14 coming up. sure looking good so far there's two more in there that we need to get I'm gonna drop our gasket in and we're gonna have this seal surface facing up then get our pass-through tube in place a little bit of Loctite then uh, we'll maneuver our bolts in probably using a magnet. Now all I'm doing here is holding it and then pushing it off from the side. No great trick. Same torque number on these, 14 foot-pounds. First, we have a seal that goes here. A couple more dowels. A gasket. Then our plate. Another gasket, like that. Here's where we set up the pickup tube. This actually goes all the way up to the neck. Through here. You want to kick it out where this section is pointing even with here. Same torque as the others, 14 foot-pounds. A couple more seals, then we can get it lowered into the casing and get it bolted down. 
then one up at the front. Let's get these rearward bolts put in. Then all we have left to do is put on that bottom cowling. We're gonna take these seven bolts at the back to 30 foot pounds. And like I said, the other two up front to 14, but no Loctite. Look, the bolts that they had in there were the same length. They're not supposed to be the same length. So I went and ordered four new ones. That's what we should be seeing right here. This is the top, and then this is the bottom. So apparently whatever shop this outboard was at previously, they got a little confused. Maybe they were working on two or three units at the same time and the bolts got misplaced. So now that we know exactly which ones are supposed to go in there, let's put it together. We will start up top and then straighten out the bottom. And at that point, we'll be able to get it remounted. Get our correct bolt straight through. Get our cap. Set to 39. Let's go. All right, so I've got it set up. Now let's put it together. Washers at the bottom, nothing up top. Well, let's go. Now let's get them tightened down. are going to be set to 52 piece of keg. Once I get the other side, then we're going to go back and tighten those lower cap bolts to 39. Fifty-three coming up. Let's go back and get those. Now let's go ahead and get that pass through for the oil drain that wasn't installed before. And now our drain bolt with its washer. We've got our set up. Let's get the lower cowling back on and then we'll almost be finished with this. Let's get our lower cowling in place. Now 
we can get in our upper shift shaft, give it a little bit of grease on it, make it easier to get through that upper grommet. There she goes. At this point in the game, be careful. You don't want to drop anything down into the, uh, the oil tank. I'm sure you could probably fish it out, but why put yourself through that much pain? Well, all right, guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. What's going to happen next? Well, we're going to reinstall that power head that we rebuilt as well as the lower unit. And if you want to be notified when that happens, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button? That way you'll know when we release those other two videos. Just want to give a quick shout out to Michael, Rudy, and Joshua who requested this particular procedure. Thanks for leaving the comments and see we do read them. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Boats.net and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.